Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us today. Topping our news today at noon, a Manatee County woman accused of trying to hire a hitman to kill her husband agrees to a plea deal. In court this morning, Rachel Leahy entered a plea of guilty to solicitation to commit murder. Investigators say last year she tried to hire an undercover detective to kill her ex-husband. She told the detective getting rid of her ex was the only way to get her children back. Leahy was willing to finance the hit through half of her ex-husband's $5,000 life insurance policy. He filed for divorce in 2011. Leahy will be sentenced at a later date. Also in court today, final details were discussed before the start of a triple murder trial. Andres Avalos will face those charges next week. Today in court, prosecutors debated on whether or not to allow crime scene and autopsy photos into the trial. They're also planning to pick potential jurors. Avalos is facing three counts of first degree murder for allegedly killing his wife, her friend, and a Bradenton pastor back in 2014. Governor Rick Scott continues his fight for Florida's future tour. He stopped in Sarasota this morning. The purpose of this tour is to encourage people to contact members of the Florida legislature and urge them to invest in key priorities for Florida's future. Two main areas the governor is fighting for include funding for uh, tourism and environmental purposes, but there are some positive factors, he says, could be seen from one county to another. Because we've added all these jobs, guess what's happened to our transportation budget? It's gone from $5.6 billion to, to almost $11 billion. Education funding, record level. So as we, so whether everything we do in Orange County helps every other county. Everything we do in Sarasota County, Manatee, helps all the other counties. 60-day legislative session wraps up this week. The next stop on the tour for the governor is in Jacksonville. In headlines on Capitol Hill, House Republicans are confident they have enough votes for their plan to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. The GOP came in two key yes votes this morning. A new amendment gives states $8 billion over five years to help cover Americans with pre-existing conditions. But the medical community says that money is just a drop in the bucket that's needed. The American Medical Association is warning that people with pre-existing conditions will get second-class health care coverage if they are able to attain coverage at all. Democrats are also warning of dire consequences. I want you to look and keep your eyes on who will feel the Trump Care's mother of all bombs of health care dropped on the American people. God have mercy on your soul. After seven years, you came up with this? You gotta be kidding me. Patient groups and health experts are also against the bill. The CEO of California's largest insurer, Blue Shield, called it flawed, saying it would keep Americans with pre existing conditions from getting affordable health care coverage. Also, today, another executive order is signed by President Trump. This one focuses on making it easier for religious organizations to become more politically active. It targets a rarely enforced IRS rule that forbids nonprofits and religious groups from endorsing or opposing political candidates if they wish to remain tax exempt. A big announcement from Buckingham Palace today. Prince Philip says he's going to step down from public duties. And he says his wife, Queen Elizabeth, is giving her full support. ABC's Molly Hunter has more from London. It's the end of an era, a milestone the British people knew was coming. Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, 95 years old, will be putting his royal feet up. This fall, retiring from the public eye. Seen today after the announcement with his wife, Queen Elizabeth, just by her side, like he so often is, supporting her as he has for decades. <laughs> Helping her, I mean, uh, supporting her, doing anything that uh, is valuable to her. Overnight, a flurry of activity at the palace. That rumor mill churned into the wee hours. A big announcement was coming. We heard the Queen's most senior aides calling her staff together, even bringing those from Scotland into town. We saw the Queen yesterday returning to Buckingham Palace from Windsor Castle, and we saw Prince Philip, too, at a public engagement at a cricket club. The couple has been married 69 years, both in their 90s, still doing more events than any other member of the royal family. And it's taken its toll. Last Christmas, the pair coming down with heavy colds and Prince Philip hospitalized several times over the last few years. The palace is saying quite clearly it's not to do with his health, but you know, at 96 he will be when he steps away. 
I think it's, you know, it's got to have an impact. Now, the Queen has had him by her side for 70 years, tens of thousands of public appearances, and she'll soldier on alone, gradually cutting back and slowing down herself. But this likely means we'll see more younger royals stepping up and taking a little bit more of the load off the Queen. Molly Hunter, ABC News, London. Gradual uh, generational change there that we're seeing, witnessing yes. right now. John Huge. is with us now, and uh, wow, some uh, activity on your radar screen we all have to watch, it's right? lit up. It yeah. is lit up. Yeah, we do. You know, uh, this, the, the Severe Storm Prediction Center, which is the agency of, uh, of NOAA that kind of looks out and uh, are experts in determining mm -hmm. what areas of the country might see severe weather or not, uh, continues to put us under a, a, a small, rather uncertain risk for severe weather, but it has been consistent over the last three days. And there's reason to think that uh, it could, certainly with some of the storms approaching, see some pretty gusty winds, and maybe damaging winds, right. uh, severe thunderstorms. Uh, tornadoes really not in the picture for us, though they are just to the north. But nevertheless, we'll keep an eye to the sky and radar and check to see what eventually progresses through the next couple of hours. Um, Lakewood Ranch, webcam put it into motion, shows a pretty nice start to the day, really. And then we got some clouds coming in. Watch now. They're coming in from two different directions. The high clouds are coming in from the Gulf waters. That's part of the blow-off from the thunderstorms that are ongoing. And then the lower-level clouds building along our sea breeze front. We'll probably see one or two showers picking up in inland areas with that sea breeze activity. But then it's back to the west where the most interesting storminess is located. You can see that line of showers, and the red crosses there are the, um, are the lightning pops that have been occurring. And it extends way south into Gulf waters. If you extrapolate forward, figure about uh, six to seven hours, then we'll probably see that line get pretty close to us by just after drive time tonight. And uh, it will be one of two waves of showers moving through. We'll talk more about it, what to expect, coming up in just a few, Scott. Okay, John, thank you. Governor Rick Scott is declaring a statewide public health emergency because of the opioid epidemic. Last year, an estimated 4,000 people died from opioid drug overdoses associated mainly with heroin, fentanyl, and prescription drugs. The governor's state of emergency declaration <coughs> excuse me, immediately frees up $27 million of federal money that can be used for prevention, treatment, and recovery services. People need access to treatment. We need to educate the community about the risks that they're facing if they use these drugs. And we need to prevent those individuals who could use these from ever starting in the first place. The Florida Senate passed a bill Wednesday imposing tougher criminal penalties against people trafficking in fentanyl. Florida is not the only state dealing with an opioid problem. The governor of Georgia is signing a bill that limits the number of treatment centers that can open in parts of the state. Centers in Georgia serve more patients from other states than its own residents. This new bill will make addiction treatment centers more strictly regulated. Governors also expected to sign bills that would allow the overdose reversing drug naloxone to be sold over the counter. He's also looking to expand state's prescription drug monitoring program. Georgia leads the South with 71 treatment centers. Florida has twice the population with 69 centers. Tonight in our continuing special report called Behind the Badge, we're going on a wild ride deep in the woods with the Northport Police Department. Our cameras go behind the scenes as police patrol the hard to reach areas of Northport like the large sand pit, which has been an area of shootings be on and stabbings. The pass. It's what the, uh, the riders will call the civic hole. Really popular spot with the uh, ATVs and the mud trucks. As you can see, there's trails and tracks and spots when we have rain gets bogged out. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 5, we'll show you how the Northport Police Department uses these ATVs and bicycles to keep their city safe. New this afternoon, the State College of Florida is giving the public a sneak peek at its new library and learning center. That facility is being built right next to the Neal Auditorium on SCF's Bradenton campus. It will include a student service center, archive and meeting rooms, and a film production studio cafe. Staff hopes the new space will be innovative and inspiring to students. And FCF's president says she has a space she's particularly excited about. The 270 degree visualization studio where students will have the opportunity to be fully immersed in what they're studying. So for example, if we have a nurse who's studying about the human heart, they can come in and stand in the middle of a human heart while it's beating. That sounds cool. 
Work on the library started last October and it's expected to be ready to open by January. Time now to head over to the kitchen where Samuel Ray is back in our kitchen from Tsunami Sushi and Hibachi Grill in Sarasota. Samuel, great to see you again. What's on your menu for today? Hey, Scott, it's a pleasure to be back. Today we're going to make an ahi tuna, tuna poke. Sounds delicious. We'll be back with you in just a little bit. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free. Services.com. A N D Services.com. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Florida Studio Theater presents Older Than Dirt, now playing in the Court Cabaret. Come celebrate the ups and downs of getting older. From joints popping to mirrors mocking, this show combines some of the funniest songs ever written for a witty and heartfelt 360 degree view of aging. Don't miss what critics are calling hilarious, incredibly creative, that has many laugh out loud moments. Older Than Dirt is now playing. Tickets can be purchased by calling 941 366 9000 or by visiting floridastudiotheater.org. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. South wind is blowing pretty strong right now. We're looking at the southwest wind at about 17. And with that westerly, southwesterly component to the wind, we're going to see the number, uh, dew point number, start to climb into the 70s later on this afternoon. It's already risen a significant amount, uh, almost 5 degrees over the course of the last few hours, and it will continue to rise. 85 degrees, the current air temperature. We are probably on our way to a temperature that's a few degrees warmer than that. But I'll tell you what, we're going to cloud up here pretty soon. We already have a little bit of cloud building out there, but we're going to see it cloud up, and when we see it cloud up, um, I think we'll probably put a hold on the temperature. Okay, in a nutshell, here's what's going on. If you kind of trace out the flow of upper level winds, you get an idea of how the jet stream is behaving. Around this kind of river of air aloft, there's little packets of energy that are being pulled along for the ride. And those packets of energy are helping to make the air rise. At the surface, there's plenty of moisture, as we have just seen, and that's helping to support the showers and thunderstorms, these kind of complexes of large-scale masses of thunderstorms that are continuing to kind of lift slowly to the north, but generally to the east. And we have a pretty good line that has formed under a cold front that's wrapped up around a low-pressure area to our north. That cold front extends out into Gulf waters, and while... It kind of looks like the, the, the bottom end of this line is just decaying and falling apart as it gets down here. And that's because the radar beam doesn't see out that far so well. Um, one way to look at this and look at the strength of these storms is to overlay the lightning strikes. And if we do that, you see really how far out the lightning strikes extend. And in fact, if we could even detect further than that, it would go further out into Gulf waters. So 
there's a pretty good chance that we'll see some thunderstorm activity as this line inches closer. And if you just extrapolate on how far it's come and how the motion uh, of the forward motion of this whole line of storms, you can figure about six hours before it touches base with us. So uh, figure around between six and nine o'clock, we'll have this line of storms getting closer to us and moving on through. Some of them have some rotation in some of the cells, which doesn't really necessarily suggest tornadoes, but does suggest some pretty good, strong thunderstorm activity. Luckily, we don't have a whole lot going on now. We may pick up a shower or two in inland areas, but that's not the significant rainfall. The significant rainfall comes with these lines of showers coming southward. The front sinks south, and we get two kind of distinct lines of showers moving through. The first one this evening, and then the second one probably tomorrow morning as well. Um, both of them have the potential of producing some pretty strong storms with gusty winds and hail. Tonight, increasing cloud cover, breezy winds with gusts as high as 25 miles per hour, possibly. And then storms, of course, lousy boating weather. I don't have to tell you that. With those storms approaching, the winds are going to get kind of gusty. The first one arrives on our doorstep, uh, say, between 6 and 9 o'clock. Probably around 8 o'clock, we'll get it pretty close to the shoreline. And the second one arrives, and I think the second one now might be a little bit weaker, coming through tomorrow morning. Um, I thought it was going to be just the other way around, but it does look like that first line of storms might take some of the energy out of the atmosphere. In any event, we'll have a strong wind out of the northwest after those storms pass by, and that will draw down some cooler, drier air that'll uh, really be very pleasant as we head into the weekend. So there's the Storm Prediction Center's idea of what might occur, and the, certainly the risk zone extends even further south than it did before. That's for a marginal risk, about a 5% chance of uh, severe thunderstorms. Not for tornadoes. T tornadoes really aren't in the forecast considering the structure of the winds aloft. But certainly some gusty winds. There's some cool pool, cold pools of air aloft that could help support some very gusty winds, downdraft winds in some of the storms. Now we need the rain. Obviously the fire danger index still high in areas that have seen some heavy rainfall. The fire index is great. It's low, but in our area it's still in the high zone. And hopefully these two lines of showers coming through will allow everyone a chance at seeing some rainfall. And the rainfall totals could be significant, a half an inch to an inch wide spread and then in some pockets maybe exceeding two inches so that would be nice we'll look for a 60 percent chance of evening showers and then again tomorrow morning a 60 percent chance of showers clearing kind of early tomorrow in terms of uh, stronger storms and then just maybe a, a, a smattering of cloud that might contain a little drizzle for the first half of the day clearing second half of the day and the weekend looks fantastic Back to you, Scott. Oh, it sure does. John, thank you so much. In health news this afternoon, and a health alert out of Hawaii after frozen raw tuna test positive for hepatitis A. The tuna, or ahi cubes, were imported from Indonesia and sold between the end of April and this week. When testing the fish, the health department discovered it was tainted with the hepatitis virus. Fortunately, none of the products made it to customers. The fish was going to be sold at local supermarkets and restaurants. Millions of people suffer from food allergies, and a new CDC study says that restaurants are working to keep allergy sufferers safe, but there's more work left to do. Kim Hutcherson explains. About 15 million Americans have allergic reactions to food. They result in about 30,000 emergency room visits every year and 150 to 200 deaths. A study from the CDC's Environmental Health Services Division found that while restaurants are working to prevent food-based allergic reactions, they could do more. The survey found that most restaurants do have ingredient lists or recipes available for most or all of their food items. But the study also found that less than half of interviewed restaurant staff received training on food allergies, and those that did often didn't learn what to do if a customer has a reaction. Researchers also found that most restaurants did not have dedicated areas or equipment for preparing and cooking allergen-free food. The study recommends that restaurants set aside these dedicated areas and improve training for staff regarding food allergies. And if you have food allergies, do your research. Make sure any restaurant you patronize will accommodate allergy-related requests. 
Be sure to inform the staff before you order. Ask questions about preparation and be prepared with allergy medication just in case. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Books can not only keep your brain sharp and lift your spirits, they can also make you healthier. According to a study published by the National Academy of Sciences, older adults who read regularly were two and a half times less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. It can also help lower stress. Other findings have linked reading fiction to better performance on empathy and social awareness tests. And here's a new study that can cool you down. Researchers overseas are revealing the health benefits of what's called ice swimming. Early studies show swimming in colder water can help people dealing with depression and stress. The chill activates the sympathetic nervous system and increases blood levels, which play an important role in the functioning of the heart. These swimmers may also experience an endorphin rush in which feel-good chemicals are released. A good temperature to swim in to get this effect is water in the low 60s, so it's not really ice swimming. You can stay in for about 20 minutes or just put some ice in the tub maybe. Ice water swimming is very popular in Europe. There's even a few events here in the U.S. during the winter months. Up next, another racial incident during the Red Sox and Orioles game in Boston. And the greatest show on earth is coming to an end this month. We'll share how you can see the last performance of the Ringling Circus from your home. Stay with us. SRQ Performance Parts provides parts and accessories from over 300 manufacturers so you can get that new manifold, carburetor, gasket, bolt kit, or nitrous oxide system fast. We'll help you beat the competition. Call or visit SRQ Performance Parts online today for all your high performance parts and advice. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I am creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. The Wild Broadway series at the Players Center brings you the classic farce, Boeing, Boeing. It's the 1960s and our swinging bachelor is juggling three beautiful stewardesses from three competing airlines. But what happens when Boeing produces a faster plane? Comedy ensues. Call the players at 365-2494 or visit us online at theplayers.org. Opening April 26, it's Boeing, Boeing. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. More racist taunts at Fenway Park last night in Boston, this time between fans. The Boston Red Sox have now permanently banned a fan from the park after he used a racial slur toward another fan. One man was there with his six-year-old son and saw the incident unfold. We were there with my father-in-law, who is from Haiti, and my son, who's biracial, and me, and we're all at Fenway. Um, a young woman from Kenya sang the national anthem, and uh, the white fan, middle-aged fan next to me, leaned over after the song and said that she sang too long, and she n-worded it up. The latest racial taunt comes after Orioles outfielder Adam Jones was called the N-word by someone in the stands Monday night. The Red Sox say they will not tolerate any use of racial slurs at Fenway. The offending fan was turned over to Boston police.
The family of the man murdered by a former NFL player is now fighting to see that player's remains. The mother of Odin Lloyd is asking the judge to order the preservation of tissues and fluid samples gathered by the, the autopsy of Aaron Hernandez for their own experts to examine. But a judge denied that request, saying they did not explain why Hernandez's physical condition was relevant to Lloyd's murder. Hernandez committed suicide in prison last month. He was serving a life sentence for killing his one-time friend in June of 2013. The Tampa Bay Rays are back at home tonight against the Marlins. Last night, the Rays losing to Miami 10-6. The Rays took an early lead in this game, but then they lost it in the sixth inning when the bullpen started. Giancarlo Stanton hit a two-run double in Miami's five-run sixth inning. Marcel Ozuna hit a homer estimated at 468 feet for the Marlins, who lost six of seven, including two straight to the Rays. Again, Marlins win 10-6. Same two teams will play again tonight at Tropicana Field. The Cleveland Cavaliers remain <clears throat> excuse me, unbeaten in the NBA playoffs. LeBron James scoring 39 points to lead the Cavs to a 125-103 win over Toronto. Cleveland now leads the best of seven series to zip. James also moved into second place on the NBA's all-time playoff scoring list, trailing only Michael Jordan. Game three is set for Friday night at Toronto's Air Canada Center. All right, time to toss it over to the kitchen now where John is with our guest and good friend Samuel Ray from Tsunami Sushi and Hibachi Grill in Sarasota. Guys? Indeed. Sam, always a pleasure having you here. Thanks, Welcome. John. Uh, cooking up something tasty, no doubt, as you always do. What you got going on today? Today we're doing the ahi tuna and salmon poke. So this is a nice. light, summery dish. So, yeah, let's get started. Let's do it. All right. So we're just going to make one, uh, one course here. The recipe makes four, um, but this is awesome. Pool side, easy to do. So let's get started here. We've got uh, salmon and tuna, about three ounces of each. So what we're going to do is we're going to dice that up in our cutting board here. And this is sushi grade. So you can tell it looks like butter. Yeah, <laughs> it's really. It beautiful. is. You want to make sure you're using the sushi grade mm -hmm. with this for sure. Which is not that easy for a, a regular fella to find sometimes. You can, yeah. You check your local grocery store. Yeah. I've seen it at Publix. Oh, you uh, have. Whole Foods definitely has it. Um, you always want to make sure it looks good, though. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. And we actually that sell it at beautiful. the restaurant, so. Um, Oh, you do? Yeah, so oh, you can really? come up and pick up fillets and, oh, that's good and to do know. stuff like that, which is great for cooking. Even if you're going to cook it, it's still good. Yeah, great. All right, so we've got a bunch of green onions here that I've cut up. This is about a quarter of a cup there. Mm -hmm. goes straight in the bowl. This is Vidalia onion. Mm. It's different than a yellow onion. It's a little bit sweeter, yes, it and is. it's not so, like, punchy in the face. With right. Yeah. <laughs> Saves your breath. So about half a cup of that. Uh, this is black and white sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. Put that in there. Um, we're using gluten-free soy sauce today, low sodium, um, to stick with the health kick and everything. Sure. <laughs> so that's going to give us a little bit of that, you know, Japanese flavor we love. A mm -hmm. little bit of red pepper to kick up the spice in there. And then this is sesame oil. About a tablespoon of that. And then honey mm. to sweeten everything. Mm -hmm. Honey is always a fun thing to add to play with especially local honey. Oh, we have so many good purveyors now. Of Absolutely. Local honey. It's yeah. really good to see. Absolutely. So we're going to mix all this up in our bowl here. And now you don't need to marinate this or let it set at all because mm -hmm. um, all the flavors will just meld together perfectly. And then in a bowl here, I've got some steamed white rice. And uh, so you just place this on top right out of the bowl here. Get plenty of that fish in there. And then uh, fresh avocado we're going to add on top. It seems so fresh and, and wonderfully light, and yet uh, very nutritious. Yes. And that's it. Great. Good Easy stuff. Easy as that. Yeah. Well, Sam, thank you so very much. Appreciate yeah. it. The recipe for it's on our website. You go to mysuncoast.com, click on the dining link page, and it'll take you right there with all the information that you need. Oh, it looks so tasty. Can't wait to grab a fork and tuck into it. Let's get in. Thanks, all sir. Right. Always Thanks. good to see you. We'll be right back. We asked you, Suncoast, why do you like ABC7? I like ABC7 because it's local. It gives me all the local news. The local news, local weather. 
It's so local and so community driven. Kelly Wilgus does a great job. John Scalzi, that's my guy. Bob Harrigan is wonderful. Stephanie's my favorite. I like Scott Dennis. I like them all. We're all very grateful that you cover what you do and you're here to participate with the community. ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud too. Going on now. For every two windows you buy, get one more free. Call today. Everyone loves a bright and cheerful smile. Not everyone can find the dental care they need and can afford. Now there's a place nearby where anyone can receive professional quality dental care at an affordable cost. The LECOM School of Dental Medicine in Lakewood Ranch is now accepting patients. You will receive your care in comfortable, state-of-the-art treatment rooms. To schedule your appointment, please call the LECOM Dental Group Practices, 941-405-1600. We will be happy to see you smiling again. You only have one life. Are you gambling with it? One in three adults have high blood pressure. Not knowing your numbers could cause you to lose big time. Luckily, you can turn the odds in your favor by getting your blood pressure checked today. Don't leave your health to chance. Learn more at heart.org slash HPV. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. The owner of an Orlando nightclub that was the site of the worst mass shooting in recent history now has plans for a memorial. The memorial will be on the Pulse nightclub property where 49 people were killed, dozens more injured last June. The city of Orlando proposed buying the club for $2.25 million and turning it into a memorial, but the owner, Barbara Poma, turned it down, wanting to create her own. She opened Pulse in 2004 as a way to honor her brother who died from AIDS. I now know that my role is to ensure that Pulse become a place of healing. It is a time for Pulse to contribute to the community in a way, in a permanent way. Poma also encouraged the crowd to not let hate win. Police in South Florida are looking for a prisoner who escaped from custody. Officers say 40-year-old Marv Hubbard escaped a minimum security work detail at a food bank in Homestead. They say he managed to take off his Department of Correction clothes and escape. Hubbard was serving a 20-year prison sentence for burglary. It's the latest clash between an airline and a passenger. A Southern California family says they were forced off a Delta flight with threats of jail time. ABC's Emily Rao has the story. Another heated exchange between passengers and the flight crew. Yeah, that's fine. You and your wife will be in jail and your kids will be in Okay. A horrible end to a Hawaiian vacation, the threat of jail time for Brian Shear and his wife on a flight home to California with their kids. Shear claims his family kicked off the overbooked Delta flight when they wouldn't give up the seat they purchased. I bought that seat. That seat, originally bought for Shear's older son, who ended up taking a different flight, instead being used for their two-year-old. Flight attendants suggesting the little boy sit on his parents' lap, which Shear and his wife initially refused. As a mother, it doesn't matter whether you know it's true or false, it, that just, it put fear in me. 
fear and outrage at the way they were treated. I got two infants. I don't know. I have to have nowhere to stay. There's no more flights. Who are we supposed to do sleep in the airport? I don't know. The couple blames the whole thing on Delta for overbooking the flight. And today on Capitol Hill, Congress will once again be grilling the CEO of United. We're here today to uh, look uh, and hear uh, about where we could uh, prod, push, or regulate, or legislate uh, to uh, get better service uh, for passengers. After a House hearing Tuesday, now it's the Senate's turn to dig into the treatment of air passengers and specifically the circumstances that led to Dr. David Dow being dragged off a United Airlines flight last month. As for that California family, they did get kicked off that flight. Delta has since apologized and promised to find a resolution. Emily Rao, ABC News, New York. A school bus in Oklahoma catches a horrific crash on its onboard camera. Take a look. This dash cam video shows a black vehicle veering into traffic, moving in the opposite direction, and then smashing into the vehicle right in front of the bus, with the car flipping over multiple times before crashing into the school bus. Nineteen kids were on board that bus at the time, but they were not hurt. The bus driver is now being praised for her swift and calm actions. Somebody get a piece of paper, one person, everybody sit in the seat you belong in. One, per one person get a piece of paper. Get a piece of paper and write down what seat number you're in and the name. Three people were hurt in that crash. No word on any charges have been filed yet. A bit of road rage takes a turn for the worst in Georgia when a woman tries to beat a man with a vacuum cleaner. Police say it started with a man in the black t-shirt walking up to the woman's car, banging on her window and yelling at her about her driving. He also tried to open up her door. That's when the woman got out, grabbed a red vacuum cleaner from her trunk, and then started beating him with it. Two city workers who were riding past the scene broke up the fight. Record-breaking flooding continues in the Midwest. Overnight, some Arkansas residents dealing with a flash flood emergency. Entire communities were swallowed by overflowing water. Nine levees were breached. And in Missouri, people are on high alert as a river continues to swell there, flooding at least 200 homes nearby so far. In Eureka, Missouri, at least 2,000 volunteers have been working around the clock, filling more than 250,000 sandbags. Some businesses are using pumps to remove the floodwaters. We just kind of said, you know, what we did last time didn't work. We need to get a system where we can pump the water out before it gets into the buildings. So we moved the wall out a little bit and left uh, some sump area between the buildings and the wall. Severe storms dropped up to eight inches of rain in some areas. And we have some rain headed our way. Meteorologist John Scalzi joins us now. I don't, we're not going to get eight inches, but... Uh, no, it's, it's a fast-moving line, yeah. so uh, I mean, if it lingered over one place for any appreciable period of time, we right. probably could. Um, but no, this is going to be a line that's going to come through rather briskly, rather quickly. It's going to kick up the winds. It's going to drop a lot of rain in a short period of time before moving on. So total accumulations would not be that great. Um, and uh, there'll be plenty of lightning, I think, to go around. Yeah. And we'll just have to watch and see if it produces any really stronger damaging winds, right. which is the main threat from this storm in our area. Just to the north of us, there's also a tornado risk. But... Uh, yeah, big changes. And then after that, just glorious weather we'll talk about in a few minutes. A little bit of extra cloud cover coming our way. The cloud cover may actually help protect us from any of these storms getting too terribly strong. We'll see exactly how that plays out. The cloud cover thicker north of us, but still we're getting a little bit of the high cloudiness in. Look at the line of storms really developing in a linear fashion with uh, lots of lightning pops. The whole system gradually drifting closer to us. You can see the lightning extends really almost the entire length of the peninsula of the state if you consider that it goes back up into Georgia as well. Now one thing to consider is that as this system gets closer it's going to kick up our wave heights. You can see how they build from south to north up to about five feet north of us and also wind speeds are going to increase. So what I'm saying is we're looking at some pretty hazardous boating conditions. Obviously if you're a boater stay in port right now. Not a good time to be out and about. We'll of course be tracking these storms to let you know whether any of them turn severe later on this evening and again tomorrow morning they're going to come in two waves. Rain chances will be going up through the night. I think around 9, 10 o'clock they'll probably peak out at about 60 percent chance and then tomorrow it's all over with and we enjoy some beautiful weather we'll talk about in a second. Scott. All right John thank you. In consumer news Google is warning users to beware of a phishing scam spread by an invitation to share what appears to be a Google document. 
Clicking on the link takes users to a site that asks permission for a fake app calling itself Google Docs. It grants access to your email accounts and contacts and then sends additional emails to your contacts list. Google says it has taken action to protect users and it has disabled offending accounts. Hulu customers getting some new service. The company launching its live TV service. This increases the list of options available to people looking to cut the cable cord. For $40 a month, you can receive live content from all of the major networks, including Hulu's on-demand video library. Hulu joins competitors like Sling TV, PlayStation View, and Direct TV now, and recently launched uh, YouTube TV. The companies offer what's called an over-the-top service, which means you can get your favorite channels on a device you already own. Hundreds of items belonging to the Ringling Brothers Circus will be going to the highest bidder in Chicago today. Posters, route maps, wagon wheels, other items once owned by the Ringling family are expected to grab some top dollars. A 77-year-old Wisconsin man who was personal friends with the last surviving widow of one of the Ringling Brothers is selling off his enormous collection. Everything was given to me by Ida B. Ringling. Uh, as you well know, the last living widow of the Ringling Brothers who passed away 51 years ago last month. But some of the most valuable would be the route books, the route cards, letters signed by the Ringling Brothers, the piano that she gave me that was first used on the Ringling Brothers Circus in the 1880s. The auction is uh, being co-signed by Richard Bennett, who is one of the last remaining friends, as you heard, of the Ringling family. Speaking of Ringling Circus, this final show is scheduled for May 21st in New York, but if you can't make it there, you can see it online. The greatest show on earth will be streamed live on Facebook on May 21st. That show will take place in Uniondale, New York. Feld Entertainment announced it was closing the Ringling Circus earlier this year due to a variety of reasons such as declining attendance, high operating costs, and prolonged battles with animal rights groups. The circus has been around for nearly 150 years. And when we come back, John will have another look at our forecast and the rain that's on the way. Plus, a large animal rescue facility here on the Sun Coast is holding a one-of-a-kind event this weekend. We'll have details in the spotlight. These are our heroes. They have sacrificed so much to serve our country. And now Granny Nannies is truly honored to serve them. We're here and we're ready to help. Call us today. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School, serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. The kitchen is where life happens. Minnesota Flooring now offers a wide variety of beautiful quality craft-made cabinetry to make sure the heart of your home reflects your style. Visit us today. Since 2004, Embracing Our Differences has used the power of art and education to promote diversity. One way it accomplishes this is through its annual outdoor exhibition of 45 billboard-sized works of art, each accompanied by an inspirational quote. Join us in creating a community that is inclusive for all, where differences are embraced and individuality is celebrated. We invite you to celebrate the voices and visions of diversity and inclusion at this year's exhibit at Sarasota's Island Park. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. At Granny Nannies, we provide your loved ones with the care they deserve, compassionate and experienced help right where you need it most, at home. Visit us at grannynannies.com. A helping hand and a gentle heart. So we are looking at an air temperature that's coming in in the mid 80s right now. We have plenty of sunshine out there helping to destabilize our atmosphere just a little bit. But high clouds should be able to roll in and kind of block some of that sunshine as we head into the next few hours. Uh, dew point value pretty close to the 70 mark now. It's risen quite a bit thanks to that southwest wind coming in at about 17 and gusting higher. And those winds will be picking up even further, I think, as we head into the later afternoon. 
87 degrees Wachula, Arcadia, Mayaca, 88 in Parrish, 87 in Bradenton, 85 degrees at Lakewood Ranch, Sarasota the same, 82 in Venice, 81 in Inglewood, and 79 degrees at Longbow Key. A big area of low pressure kind of spinning around, actually multiple vortices and a, a uh, frontal boundary extending out into Gulf waters is what this system is all about. Little areas of energy are kind of riding along the upper level winds and it's helping to destabilize the atmosphere further, kind of acting like a vacuum cleaner and pulling up the, the moist air from below. As you make air rise, it cools, condenses, produces rainfall, and if you do that uh, with enough vigor, well, you can get some pretty good updrafts going that produce some pretty good storms. And that's kind of what we've had out here in Gulf waters. Some of these storms are really a lot more significant, I think, than they look. Remember, you're, you're talking about a radar beam that's, that's going out over 100 miles, and it's looking way up in the sky at this point. Lots of lightning pops, an indication of the strength of some of these storms. You're very linear in nature, but some of the cores of the storms are, are significant, like this one right here. If you cut it and uh, take a look at it crosswise, you can see that these highest reflectivity cores, these highest updraft cores uh, coming in at over 50 dBZ, it's called, which is an indication of how, how much rain it's hitting and reflecting energy back to the radar. It's going up to 40,000 feet, so that's significant. That's probably a hail-producing storm there. And there's more of them out there, just kind of the radar beam has a hard time seeing them that far out. We will probably see some very heavy rainfall at times during the six, seven, eight, nine o'clock hours, somewhere in that time frame, going from north to south across the region as that line sinks southward. Probably a lot of lightning pops as well. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see that. The frontal boundary itself will produce two distinct lines of showers, the first one coming through this evening, the second one coming through tomorrow morning, both of them having the potential as well to produce some pretty gusty winds. So we'll be watching for that as well. Uh, increasing cloud cover. Breezy winds with gusts, and then storms tonight and storms tomorrow morning, by the way, as well, in the pre-dawn hours. The first line comes through with some probably pretty good thunderstorms this evening between around 6 and 9 o'clock, I'd say. And then the next line comes through, probably a weaker line coming through tomorrow morning in the pre-dawn hours. But nevertheless, even in a weak line, you can get one or two storms that will produce some pretty heavy rainfall and some pretty gusty winds. So we'll be with you tomorrow morning on Sunrise to let you know exactly what transpires then. After those storms leave the area, pretty early on, just after sunrise, I think, we'll be looking at some slow clearing, followed by some very pleasant temperatures for Friday night, music on Main, for Saturday and Sunday. All of the temperatures look like they'll be in the mid-70s to upper 70s and lower relative humidity. Beautiful, beautiful weather. Scott? All right, John, thank you so much. This is the time of year when entertainment options can become a little scarce, but there's still a lot going on here. ABC 7's Linda Carson has it all in the spotlight. Brutus the Liger is going to be the most popular guest at the Big Cat Habitats concert this weekend. Brutus weighs about a thousand pounds. He's a big boy, yeah. Brutus is absolutely amazing. Uh, what a cool thing for people to be able to see. Uh, he's probably one of the largest big cats in the country. And uh, you know that because he's a male liger and he's just a really uh, impressive guy. They say that that's actually about the size of what a saber toothed tiger would have been. Big Cat Habitat is having its first ever concert on Saturday and beforehand guests can have beer and wine and food and mingle with the animals. And they can tour the facility, see the animals at night, which is great fun because they act differently at night. They're more alert. Some amazing performers, friends of Kay's from Hollywood, are coming to entertain outside under the stars. We have a Grammy Award winning p piano player. We have a famous flautist. Uh, Greg Ryder is a flamingo guitar player. He's awesome. A wonderful singer named Anna Danes, and she's brilliant. She's a big deal out in Hollywood right now. And uh, a local band at the end, a rock and roll band called Maiden Kane. It's a fundraiser for a very important purpose. To build a clinic here on site, just for animals with even minor stuff. It's very uh, frightening for them sometimes to travel. And it's better if we can do it here in-house. So we're building a little clinic, and we want to build uh, a retirement area for some of our older cats. 
everybody's getting ready for the big event. The Angoras are getting dolled up with summertime haircuts. All the animals are fascinated by visitors. The bears will be showing off new digs. Now we're putting a permanent shade structure throughout the entire bear compound, and we're adding three new in-ground swimming pools to this end of the bear compound. Soon you'll see bears lounging around the pool. We're taking some of the old telephone poles and we're gonna make bear lounge chairs for by the pool out of the old pole. So it's gonna be a, really a, a cool thing for the public to get to see the bears just chilling by the pool. The Big Cat Habitat concert is this Saturday. The VIP portion starts at 4.30, the regular concert at 5.30. If you're looking for something exciting and one of a kind, this is an event you don't wanna miss. Linda Carson, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Linda, thank you so much. This is a very big day for lovers of a galaxy far, far away. And the star of a new sci-fi movie is a feature face of a comic book series. Entertainment News is next. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half. Nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. <laughs> Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud too. Going on now. For every two windows you buy, get one more free. Call today. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or heaven forbid replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. The cast of Happy Days coming together to remember a lost castmate. The remaining crew met up to remember uh, Aaron Moran, who died recently. A photo shared online shows Ron Howard, Marion Ross, Don Most, Anson Williams, Kathy Silvers, and Scott Bayo all posing together. The reunion taking place at Moran's California home known as the Happy Days Farm. Moran died last month at the age of 56. 
Actor Chris Pratt has his very own comic book. The Guardians of the Galaxy star is featured in the latest Tidal Waves Fame biography series. The comic traces Pratt's rise to stardom. His latest movie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, is based on a comic, and it hits theaters tomorrow. May the 4th be with you. Today's a big holiday for Star Wars fans, as May the 4th is a play on the popular Star Wars line, May the Force Be With You. It's known as Star Wars Day. A few ideas to celebrate include watching all of the movies in chronological order, of course, if you have that time. Buy something nerdy or techy, and there are big sales on official Star Wars merchandise as well. And at StarWars.com, you can find recipes for your Star Wars themed party, from blue milk to Princess Leia Nutella buns. Diehard fans had their convention last month in Orlando. This is the day for Star Wars fans. Wow. Yeah. I guess so. Now, I like the Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't consider myself that big of a fan right. to watch every Star Wars movie back to back straight through. That would be a lot. Whew. I'll Whatever. watch one. Yeah. I'll watch one today. But yeah. all of them? No. How long would that take? I mean, there's... I won't watch them today. Today I'll be watching Radar, I think, <laughs> most six, of the day. Seven, eight movies? Yeah, yeah. a lot, a lot yeah. of stuff. Bob will have the latest on Radar coming up at 5. All right, John. Have a great day, everyone. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC7's Good Morning Suncoast.